Welcome to part two of our video series. Uh, these are focusing on the essentials, meaning the inputs that are most important to get right when you're trying to uh, build a farm in AMTS. The first video in the video series was focusing on the farm screen and the settings. The second one here will be focusing on barns and lots. When we open up this screen, barns and lots, the first time you open it up, it will open up to a blank screen where you'll want to enter in or create a new barn or lot. Once you create the barn or lot, you will want to uh, start looking at some of these inputs here and try to focus in on a couple that we're going to uh, determine to be the essential ones. They are actually in bold. It's the temperature and the flat distance walked. These two are the most important to get uh, right for most of our systems. And in most confinement systems, will really be the only ones that we need to focus in on this screen. Now, from a temperature standpoint, lactating cows, the temperature is going to be most important to characterize heat stress if they experience that. And in dry cows or heifers, cold stress will be the most important thing to uh, characterize. The other one is flat distance walked. This is what we use to calculate a large portion of the maintenance requirement. So if you have animals that walk quite a bit longer in terms of distances, that will reduce the ME allowable milk because there is energy associated with that walking. So we're going to talk a little bit more about each of those inputs, and then I'll give you a little bit of an overview of the rest of the maybe not quite as important. From an environment standpoint, what we're going to want to do is use the temperature and humidity that the cows actually feel in the barn. So even though we may see large swings in temperature or humidity through the year, we want to actually enter in what the cows feel. So during the summer, if we have some heat abatement, they may not actually feel the full temperature of the summer. And during the winter, if we have them indoors, we may not actually get as cold as our, our climate data would say. So always enter the temperature and humidity that the cows feel. And we also have a very useful feature in the program that helps automate this process. So all you need to do is uh, enter in the information throughout the year and the program will automatically use the correct temperature and humidity based on the system time of your computer. So what these are, uh, the way we do this is through environmental or activity templates. So what we do is we click this data template managers and we can click environmental templates. And here, since I already have several built, I already have one listed, but you can always create a new one by clicking create. When you create, when you click create, it'll ask you for a name. You fill that in and it will populate a new template for you. Now, because I've already got several in here, I will just select one that I've already created. And once you have one sitting here, you can ed edit any of the information that you see and you can do this for each month. The most important ones to get right will obviously be temperature and perhaps humidity because then the program can calculate essentially the feels like temperature or the effective temperature index. Enter in these values all the way through the year. And then when the program opens up, each time it opens up, it'll check the date and it'll use the appropriate month for the inputs for temperature. That way you don't even have to think about it. You don't even have to come to the Barnes and Lots screen and it will automatically update. The same thing can be done for activity templates. In most confinement systems, we probably won't actually use a, an activity template because the animals generally walk the same amount depending on the time of year that it is. Now in a past through based system, you might have an, a situation where they actually walk quite a bit more during the summer. Um, so here you can see one I've built that has a flat distance walked increasing quite a bit during the summer when they're out on pasture. This may be something that's also useful for a tie stall herd where they may not have uh, much access to uh, exercise lots during the, the cold or, or muddy months of the year, but during the summer they may be outside quite, quite a bit more often. All this is automated and based off of your system time once you've uh, populated this template. To apply the template to a given location, all you need to do is select the template from this drop down here. So here we could say, well, this barn that I have is going to be based on the Midwest freestyle template. Now the uh, program will automatically use whatever we have entered for the Midwest freestyle template. The nice thing about these templates is they are available across all of your different farms. So you only need to build it once. It doesn't matter where you build it, which farm you build it in but it will be available for all of your farms. It's well worth the time and effort to go through and build a couple templates for the area that you work in. That way, when you go to set up a farm, all you need to do is select the environmental template and it'll automatically keep these temperatures and humidity, et cetera, 
updated based on the time of year that you are working at. That covers it for templates. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about this uh, flat distance walked and slope distance walked because these can be important inputs for uh, many of our systems, especially if it's a larger uh, farm or a larger uh, layout or pasture type systems. To estimate the flat distance walked, we have a couple of different ways to do this. One way is by using the activity calculator. This is a very handy tool that can help us understand how far a typical animal walks based on the type of environment she's in. If we have a tie stall barn, then we might just put in how long they spend out in the yard and the size of the exercise yard. And this will use some uh, some default values to calculate perhaps how far these animals will walk based on how much time they're out there. If we use something like free stall, we have some other inputs, such as the number of stalls and animals, number of times milking, time spent in the, the milking center, and then also the dimensions of the pen or the distance from the pen to the parlor. This is all used to calculate the flat distance walked, basically based on the assumption that every time the animal goes to be milked, she has to make that whole round trip plus a little bit of extra time spent walking in the pen because if she was in the far end of the pen and it was time to go milking, then she had to walk the length of that pen. The overcrowding numbers, meaning the number of stalls and the number of animals, this will uh, increase the number of hours standing and the number of position changes, which, which slightly increases the maintenance requirement. This is to reflect a little bit of the energetic cost of overcrowding, essentially saying that animals that have to move around a lot to find empty beds or empty spots in the in the feed rail, those animals will expend a little bit more energy doing that and may have a slightly higher amount of stress. This is a very useful tool to use, and I encourage you to use this if you uh, don't have many other ways to calculate this. There are a couple of other popular methods that people use, including uh, perhaps using a wheel to pace off exactly how far a cow would walk to go from the middle of her pen to the parlor and back. Uh, that can be a useful way to do it. And another way to do it that is, is becoming more and more popular is to use overhead imagery. So in this case, what I have is um, some shots from Google Earth, actually. And in this case, you can actually do a point-to-point -point measurement based on the overhead layout of a farm. And you can estimate how far it takes to get from the middle of a parlor to the middle of the pen and back. Round trip amount times three gives you the estimated walking distance of the animals. So here you can see there's actually quite a bit of range across different systems. Here with a 3x milking, fairly close parlor, we are all around a thousand meters. With a 3x milking at a little bit further away parlor, or a larger farm, we're right around 1800 meters. And in a more extreme example, when we're talking about a, a large farm layout, especially pasture, uh, in this case, we're talking about almost 4,000 meters on a 2x milking basis. Um, one thing to kind of keep in mind, just a good rule of thumb, is that for every thousand meters that a cow walks, it is about the same amount of energy as it takes to make one half a liter of milk. Kind of a neat little uh, fact that you can use up around the table, or if you actually want to use it to help estimate how much milk is spent um, just walking around, uh, you can use that number there. And here we've already gone through a little bit of the, the activity calculator. That covers what I'll call the essentials of each of the inputs on this screen. A lot of the other inputs can actually be quite important depending on the situation you're in. For most confinement herds, you don't necessarily have to worry about them, but if you are dealing with a pasture-based system, or if you're dealing with animals out on a range, such as uh, beef cows, then this information can become quite important for determining the requirements. That wraps it up for the uh, barns and lots screen, and look forward to the next screen, which will be focusing on cattle inputs.